This is Valley News Live at 4. We have team coverage for you this afternoon on some breaking news. Just about 15 minutes ago, police took into custody the armed robbery suspect who's tied to several robberies in the valley. He's been on the run for almost 24 hours. 21 year old Hunter Havisto was wanted in connection to the armed robbery of MH gas station off of Main Avenue in Fargo yesterday, but also two other robberies that happened earlier this week and another one today at Mr. Money in Fargo. Starting off our team coverage is Valley News Team's Aaron Walling live where the arrest was just made. Aaron, what do you know? Stacey, that is right. They have arrested Havisto. That was shortly after about 3.30. Now an officer had come out and spoke to us and he was saying that they may have seen him in the 2100 block on 9th Avenue South. But shortly after that, he came out and said that they had him. They also said that he was taken in without incident and they said he was in connection with the other robberies that happened yesterday and today. Also, Throughout this whole afternoon, we've been seeing officers patrolling up and down 23rd Avenue South trying to find this guy. They did have a vehicle that he had stolen and dropped off at a gas station off of 6th Avenue South just down this way. And they were continuously trying to look for him, but they eventually found him in the 2100 block on 9th Avenue South. But that's not where the event started. That actually started at Mr. Money, where we go to Valley News Team's Bailey Hurley with more information. Bailey? Yeah, Aaron, I did speak with the owner of Mr. Money just a little bit ago, and he says he and his employees watched as that suspect stolen vehicle backed into a parking spot right in front of their storefront. He says that Havisto then walked into the store, held a gun up to him and his employees, and demanded $1,000. The owner says they did give over that money, and then that's when Havisto pointed towards another till and said that he wanted money from that till as well. The employees did comply and give that money to Havisto, and that's when the owner says Havisto told the uh, his him and his employees that they he wanted them to follow him. That's when the owner says he told him absolutely not that he got his money and to get the heck out. That's when the suspect then got out. He ran out to the car and that's when the owner says one of his employees did fire rounds at that suspect stolen vehicle solely as a way to make that car more identifiable both to the public and police. That vehicle then did flee from here and ended up near the 25th Street and 13th Avenue area. And that is where the story ends. I did just speak with uh, the owner of Mr. Money just moments ago, letting him know that Havisto has been uh, successfully apprehended. He just said he's so glad that this has a good ending and that no other business owners have to live in fear or have the scary incidents that both he and his employees, as well as many other businesses, have had to go through the last 24 hours. Live in Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Bailey and Aaron, thank you both for those live reports. There's also been a breaking news development today in a stabbing case that left a 14 year old girl dead. The state's attorney's office filed a motion today to amend Arthur Colley's charges from attempted murder to murder. Colley's accused of brutally beating and stabbing Jupiter Paulson last Friday. Once a judge reviews and approves the motion, Colley would officially be charged with murder. Meanwhile, Sanford Health held a donor walk today in honor of Jupiter. Her organs and tissues will be donated to those in need. Hospital staff as well as family and friends escorted Jupiter from her room to the operating room where Sanford's transplant team took over recovering her organs. Another hot day out there and it's causing problems for some people enjoying rib fest. We're getting reports of some customers fainting due to the heat and there might be another issue for those tents tonight. High winds. Let's head over to Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson now with a first look. Hutch. Stacy, thanks so much and good late afternoon everyone heading into the evening. We are looking at our live shot from the home of economy location in the Devil's Lake Basin. Uh, clouds, showers and thunderstorms arrived there first, but first we have to beat the heat as you were talking about. It's our number one concern and we have a lot of concerns in our weather. We have dangerous heat indices. Then later we'll have a few pop up thunder showers here late afternoon, early evening in the Southern Valley. Then the main event is developing out to the west. Let's go over all of that right now. Temperatures 90s to 100 as forecast for Aberdeen and Sisseton and 70 in Langdon. Quite a range of temperatures. Heat indices are 101 in Fargo and that is why there's the issue. If you're feeling hot, you're feeling lightheaded, cool off as fast as you can. Even a cool shower or run through the sprinkler will do a lot. Wet the head down, that helps. Pop up thunder showers most likely in the Southern Valley. That's problem number two. They'll be marginally severe. They could produce some hail and gusty winds, but the main events taking place out in Montana where we have a line of storms developing a tornado watch in effect until 10 o'clock our time and then they move our way. So the timing is going to be overnight before those storms get here. Now, while our neighbors in the western part of the Dakotas will have the most high risk of severe weather, we will here as well. 
I'll time out these storms for you, but suffice it to say, many of us will not see storms until the wee hours of the morning. And yes, they still could be quite severe. I'll have all the risks here in a few minutes. All right, thanks so much, Hutch. Traffic is moving again in the eastbound lanes of I-29 at the main avenue overpass, but it's just a temporary fix. Heat caused that road to buckle yesterday, causing a foot-long break. Bob Walton, the district engineer, tells us in his more than two decades on the job, this is the worst road buckling he's ever seen. A Becker County jury convicted Morris Dodd Jr. of second degree manslaughter, culpable negligence today for causing the death of a retired Lake Park police chief. Dodd shot 53 year old Jay Nelson while he was hunting back in November 2018 on the White Earth Reservation. He says he was trying to shoot a deer. Dodd previously pled guilty to two counts of ineligible person in possession of firearm. He hasn't been allowed to own guns since being convicted of sex crimes back in the 90s. He'll be sentenced next month. Firefighters are working to determine what caused a house fire this morning in Horace. It happened at a home between Horace and Oxbow along 175th Avenue. The two people inside were able to make it out, but the family pet died in the fire. The house is said to have significant damage to the kitchen and upper level. One person was arrested this morning after police were called to an apartment building for a report of a man with a knife. That happened in South Fargo in the 3200 block of Cedar Parkway. When our Valley News Live team arrived on the scene, two police cars were in the parking lot and one of the officers told us an arrest was made. Police say the call involved a mental health situation. No other details are available at this time. It's official. The Keystone XL pipeline has been canceled. The project's developer formally pulled out after President Biden blocked the controversial construction. Laura Podesta has the latest. Day one in office, President Biden pulled the permit needed to finish construction of the Keystone XL. Now TC Energy, which had been building the pipeline, says the project is no more. The XL pipeline, which was going to run from Alberta, Canada to Nebraska, is only 8% complete. What gives a foreign corporation the right to come in and take land away from Nebraska farmers? The project faced years of protests from environmental activists and farmers, ranchers, and indigenous communities who live along its proposed route. And many worried it would speed up global warming. A lot of jobs, 28,000 jobs. President Trump was a supporter of the pipeline's construction, claiming it would bring employment and needed revenue to rural parts of the country. Attorneys general from 21 states sued Mr. Biden and other members of his administration in March over the revocation of the permit. The pipeline was expected to channel as much as 35 million gallons of crude oil a day. Opponents insist America's future lies in clean energy. We all want to create jobs. You know where the jobs are? The jobs are in energy efficiency. The jobs are in sustainable energy. One of the major components of President Biden's trillion dollar infrastructure and jobs proposal is a federal clean electricity standard. That overall bill has yet to be voted on as it faces opposition from Republican members of the Senate. According to the Natural Resources Defense Council, a nonprofit that works to protect the environment, more than 90 leading scientists and economists opposed the XL pipeline, in addition to world leaders like the Dalai Lama and a former president, Jimmy Carter. Concordia College announced the name of its new School of Health Professions. It's the Sanford Highmark School of Health Professions. The name is in honor of Sanford's support of Concordia, as well as the founder of Concordia's healthcare leadership program, Ted Highmark. Sanford has donated land and a building to house the new school, and officials say the timing couldn't be better. The timing uh, couldn't really be better with what we're seeing coming out of the pandemic and the demand for services and thus the need for additional health care professionals. Renovations to the Sanford Clinic building are set to begin at the start of next year. The grand opening is set for the fall of 2023. It's a topic few people want to talk about, but one we need to, especially after the tragic loss of a 15-year-old Davies High School student. We're talking about suicide prevention. 28 teams will be competing at the inaugural Liam G. Med baseball tournament this weekend. The teams have traveled across North Dakota, South Dakota, and Minnesota to help raise awareness about suicide prevention. All the proceeds will go to the 463 Foundation. It's a group created to reduce stigma, build hope, and end teen suicide. Fargo youth baseball players will wear custom jerseys in the days leading up to the tournament, displaying the message, you are not alone. You're not alone. Um, don't feel like, like you're the only person out there, and, and there's, there's resources out there that can help you um, if, if you're having bad thoughts or, or need just someone to talk to. And so... 
Games begin at 9 tomorrow morning, followed by messages from Liam's parents and a Sanford Pediatric Traumatic Stress Specialist at 7 p.m. Liam's former team will be playing starting at 8 tomorrow night. Admission is $10. There's a new enhanced health crisis response system to provide support 24 hours a day, seven days a week to North Dakotans experiencing mental health or substance use challenges. The crisis line is 211. Trained specialists provide confidential support and try to resolve the crisis over the phone. There are also options available for situations that require an in-person response. Some people got a rare view of a solar eclipse today. We'll show you the spectacular video right after the break. But next, weather, we have to beat the heat first. It is dangerously hot out there. Triple digit heat indices. Stay hydrated and please check the back seat for pets and kids. Heading into the overnight, we need to prepare for some damaging wind from these storms out in Montana. We'll time them out, tell you when they arrive in your neighborhood right after this.